Hello everyone, and welcome to another Company Heroes 2 replay cast. My name is ATR, and today we're gonna have ourselves a 1v1 on Langreskaya. Our heroes today are going to be Fortune, playing as the British, the... What is it called? UKF? Forces? In the blue. And his opponent is going to be none other than Jessalyn in the red, playing as the Ostir or Wehrmacht faction. So, welcome back, guys. Sorry, I was away for about a week. Wasn't able to get any videos out, and especially not when the Brits hit. But the British are no longer coming. They are now in the game. And, uh, well, basically get ready for Brit week within the Brit month of the Brit year, I suppose. We're going to be seeing a lot of British forces, at least for a while, so that we both as viewers, spectators, and players get, you know, accustomed to the faction and learn its ins and outs and so whatnot, you know. So, we see Mr. Fortune calling in some Vickers heavy machine gun team. Four-man team. Pretty much, you know, your standard. It's not a Soviet team that nice, likes to pile on a lot of people on it. Uh, it's basically an MG. How good it is, I don't actually know, but we'll find out, I suppose. You do start off with an infantry section, which is currently inside this shack here, getting shot up by the sniper that is now on the field for Jessalyn. Pretty much his first unit right off the bat. I believe I've been reading that sniper is very, very strong against the Brits, so... We shall see how that plays out. Ooh, nasty shot flies, and the section is forced to retreat. But the British forces are very, very interesting. They have some unique type of teching structures. They also have the weapons, racks, or weapon tents, I suppose, here. That allow them to get upgrades for their infantry, much like the uh, USF. But, uh, but yeah, so right now we see Fortune going for the Universal Carrier. This, if you remember, back in Company Heroes 1, was also available... But, yeah, I mean, they have some similarities from the original Company of Heroes uh, British faction, but not exactly the same. They have some key differences there, and hopefully we will see those around. A lot to really go through right now. We'll hopefully just be able to, uh, you know, live it for ourselves. So, yeah. This, uh, the Universal Carrier can get upgraded with the Bickers uh, machine gun on top of it, which allows it, you know, obviously more firepower. Well, it has access to flamethrowers, although you do require the platoon command post to do so, so it has a little bit more versatility than the, you know, the original iteration of that vehicle in Company Heroes 1, but well, we'll see. So for now, though, it does have still, you know, without getting the upgraded on the Vickers machine gun, it does have a gun in the front on the hull, so it's still able to... Uh, to do a decent amount of damage, it does have, of course, the capacity to carry a squad inside of it. So that is, you know, something else to keep in mind. However, it isn't that strong. You know, you see there the Grand Squad took some damage. Not too much, but it is still a mobile platform. Similar, in, I suppose, in strength to any scout card that you would get that early on in the game. The infantry section is pretty much the, uh, you know... The basics. You don't actually start with engineers. It does have access to pyrotechnic supplies and medical supplies. I mean, spoiler guys, there's going to be a lot of things that I'm not going to know what the hell I'm talking about right now. That's why we're going to be spending a long time casting the bridge. Because, I, again, I was away. I actually didn't get even a uh, chance to play it on the uh, the limited trial period. Didn't even get a key for that because I knew I wasn't going to be in town, so didn't even bother doing that. <clears throat> so anyways, we see a grand squad retreating for Jessalyn. Jessalyn, for his part, obviously went to your one, as you know. Well, he got the sniper. Sniper on the field now with nine kills. Got himself two grands and an MG42 on the field. Pretty good, solid uh, order, even though the sniper came first, but you know. We also see some changes to uh, Langreskaya in the uh, the patch where the Brits got added. There was some rebalancing in some maps, Langreskaya being one of them. And if I can catch a break between the action, I'll, uh, I'll let you know. Grand Squad getting itself almost killed there by the uh, Carrier. Almost gets killed. Carrier does get upgraded with the Flamethrowers. We'll be able to help out significantly against this MG42. As we see that the Platoon command post has gone down. 
Now, with the platoon command post, you do have access to a, well, a lot of things. But the Brits have a very special type of teching where it has essentially an exclusivity. You have access to two different types of units from each of the, um, I guess, the, uh, the tech buildings. But they are mutually exclusive. So you can either requisition the uh, AK 75mm uh, armored car or you can go for the ball force emplacement. It's an upgrade that you have to get, but you unlock the uh, that ability, that you know, unit and such. But you don't get access to the other one, so it's either one or the other. So it's an, it's an interesting, that's a little bit more depth in the game, which I, I like. I like a lot. So we see the uh, the carrier now with the flamethrowers pulling back as it did got fausted. It's uh, damage on the engine. We do have a uh, six pounder anti tank gun on the field for fortune, which is essentially an anti tank gun. Um, considering its weight, I would assume it's you know stronger than other things, but you know who knows. Infantry section changes its uh its icon when it gets upgraded so it got the medical supplies which uh allows them to heal themselves and other injured troops so it essentially becomes your um you know your your med bunker <laughs> you do have to have it back at base or near the squad that needs healing but you know it essentially works in the same fashion <laughs> the uh Sorry, the, uh, the Universal Carrier pushing forward, forcing the Grand Squad to retreat. We see the uh, 222 on the field for Jesseling as Tier 2 has gone down for him. Gets some good shots there on the Carrier, almost killing it off, but stays alive. We now have the uh, Royal Engineers, I think they're called. Let me go back here. But yeah, you can see here, these guys are healing the, uh, the other troops. Um, yeah, Royal Engineers, these, again... Pretty similar to what we saw in the original Company Heroes. They do have access to the uh, hazard removal package and, of course, the ability to repair. So it's an interesting, you know, type of teching where you don't start with, you know, your quote-unquote worker, right? It's, uh, it's not something that you're essentially used, used to, you know, but, you know, it's cool. It's an interesting choice. And so far, generally, I've been... Reading pretty uh, positive things regarding the uh, the Brits as far as people liking them. I mean, obviously there may be some balance issues here and there that will inevitably be changed and switched around or just addressed and fixed normally, which you know happens with any uh, major release and addition of another faction into a game. But um, so far seems seems pretty good. So MG42 catching the engineers as they just push forward with a sweeper. Do they get the access to hide it? No, it doesn't look like they do. They're not like the, uh... Ooh, the 222 almost takes out the Universal Carrier. Manages to barely get out of there. The, uh... The AT gun does get a good shot off there on the 222, so the 222 is forced to back off, and we now have a pack on on the field for Jessalyn as well. Sniper still shooting away, 18 kills to its name. Haven't even checked if it's done the double tap thing, but... Maybe, I don't think it has. Maybe it has. I don't know. Doesn't seem too, uh, too important. Ready to shoot. I mean, do we have anything coming down for Mr. Fortune? Well, doesn't look like. Oh, wait. Let's he is going to be building himself a Bofors, the 40mm emplacement. So, yeah. So, basically, he selected that right there from the, uh, from the platoon command post. And that means he has access to build that now. It is, of course, a, um... Uh, an emplacement, so it has to be built on the field. You don't call it in or anything, but uh, but yeah, you also do have access to the um, the mortar emplacement, but it doesn't look like he's uh, laid it down yet or at all, maybe. But it's a little bit bigger than the uh, the original one from Company Heroes, but still, very very similar in uh, in feel. 20 kills to the sniper so far for Jessalyn. Jessalyn did select his doctrine. I don't know if I mentioned it already. It was the mobile defense doctrine. But we'll probably have some Pumas get called in to deal with any big threats, I suppose. The Vickers Heavy Machine Guns teams pretty much being uh, utilized aggressively here to cap. Ooh, yeah, 222 gets up right next to it. 
Get some good kills on it, but it'll make it out of there. The sniper wasn't anywhere near. It was uh, over on the left-hand side. What is that? Oh, that's the... Oh, yeah, I forgot. They added a little icon there to signify what uh, what it's doing, which is prioritizing vehicles before it was still utilizing the, uh, the hold fire icon, which is the little red mark with the slash across. So, you know, while it served the purpose, it wasn't, you know, exactly clear to what it was doing. Now it just holds that it's actually, you know, holding for vehicles. Grants on the left-hand side capping, so we do see the 40-millimeter 40, 40, uh, emplacement uh, already down. Does it show the radius? Uh, ah, it doesn't show the radius. Let me see if I can toggle or anything. No, it doesn't show. Ah, well, I, I hoped it would, but... Uh, another cool thing that the, uh, the Brits have, especially because you're going to see a lot of emplacements and such that are going to be most likely inevitably be put out on the field... Um, they, um, they have the ability to, uh, to raise the structure, which is, uh, basically making it more, uh, resistant to damage. I don't know exactly what the values are in that, but yeah, like, if you're getting mortared, you know, in direct fire, artillery, you can brace it, and it'll take, it'll absorb the damage more effectively and potentially stay alive. Right-hand side, the, uh, 222, trying to push that, uh... Engineer squad out of that house manages to do so as we do have Panzer Grenadiers with Trex already on the field. Flamethrower burst going into the house manages to catch the house ablaze. It looks like the house is smoking and yeah, it's exploding. So yeah, that house is definitely on fire. So it'll take a while, but it will soon collapse to the flames. Kind of a cool thing. Oh, nasty Shrek flies. Oh, the uh, Panzer Grenadiers almost get taken out, but the uh, car itself gets only abandoned. 222 pushes up trying to finish the job, but thankfully the engineers were nearby and able to pop back into that car and, uh, well, carrier. It's not a real car, really. And, uh, and keep it alive. That's a nice lucky break there for Fortune. Now, one of the differences here from. I mean, not one, another difference. <laughs> from uh, the original Company Heroes is that if you remember, if you played it, the uh, the Royal Engineers were the only ones that got access to the Piats, which were, you know, the only infantry carried anti-tank uh, things <laughs> that the... Uh, that the uh, that the Brits got uh, this time, you know, no longer the case because it's essentially the same as the weapon racks. You can actually place your piats on anything else if you wanted to. So, <laughs> that's cool. that i didn't know okay well so the bull force essentially has its own form of uh indirect artillery that's kind of cool i like that i thought it was kind of the same thing as it just was uh direct fire but anyways so the Puma's on the field for Jessalyn, of course, and he's taking some shots through the hedge, trying to get some damage into that uh, bull force. The bull force itself is, like I said, bigger than what we usually, well, what we previously saw in Company Heroes 1. But because of that, it also has the ability to be garrisoned, and you can see that there is a Bickers machine gun inside of it. Infantry section popping out of the house as it got a little bit grenaded. <laughs> a little bit too much grenades for their taste, but, you know, they're fine. Also, another thing that the Brits have in Company Heroes 2 is the sniper. This is a 55 caliber armor piercing sniper, so it is actually pretty good against the vehicles. Won't one shot, you know, not even a 222. I don't think so. It shouldn't. But it is able to even provide support against that. Of course, it is a sniper regardless, so it's going to explode infantry if it hits it. So, you know, the, uh, the German sniper need to be a little bit careful. You can see there, their uh, the ranges are overlapping there, but uh, they're not within each other's range just yet. Sniper is, of course, holding fire, so it looks like Fortune is just trying to bait the sniper into existence and make sure that he can get a clean shot at him. Carrier 
So 2-2-2 two, two, two over on the right hand side, still gonna be holding here, the uh, Universal Carrier gonna expose itself, get shot at, but it doesn't actually get hit. The enemy are attacking an emplacement. And the enemy is attacking an emplacement. It'll be fun to hear all those uh, different sounds. So yeah, the Puma is just popping back and forth, getting some shots off on the 40mm weapon, but it's uh, being replaced, not replaced, repaired <laughs> by the uh, by the engineer, so, you know, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna take some damage. Could essentially die to prolonged damage, but it should be fine. Panzer Grenadiers with Treks are also gonna be moving close to it, probably getting some shots through the hedge. Because I do not believe that the Bullforce has a side range of this. It's still a hedge. Even though you can kind of see right there through that, it's not exactly, you know, available. They end up impacting on the uh, hedge there. The return fire there from the Bullforce through the sky. Ooh, get some good shots there on the uh, on the Puma. But it stays alive. Right hand side infantry section running into an MG. We see the. 55 cal sniper still holding its ground, still standing still. It doesn't look like he wants to expose it. So he doesn't want to reveal his hand. I think Fortune, I mean, I don't know if Jesselin spotted it. He is being very uh, very passive with his own sniper. He's uh, keeping it far back, moving it over on the, on the, <clears throat> sorry, on the right hand side. Fortune is just holding there. I mean, it hasn't actually shot or killed anything, so. Yeah, I think he's just waiting for that opportunity. We've been promoted, but does that include Back at base, we see the company command post coming online. With that, we also see a second uh, six-pounder anti-tank gun coming into play. So from this one, he has access to, of course, vehicles. Uh, and like the other one, has some exclusive things where... You go for the uh, the anvil specialization or whatever you call it, and the hammer, which gives you access to different abilities and uh, different tanks. One being the Churchill, the other being the Comet. So what they do and how good they are, I don't know. Don't ask me. I haven't played, <laughs> but we will. Uh, we will see. Hopefully, like I said, expect a lot of Brits. So if you're not actually a fan of the Brits, you can probably skip a week or two because I'm just going to be casting Brits, nothing else. So the sniper over on the right-hand side, getting a little bit revealed there. Takes some shots to the MG, taking some damage, but the uh, the, uh, the British sniper was forced to retreat. It took some damage. Not sure if it was, uh, you know. Oh. I'm assuming it's going to be the AT gun that took it down. Yeah. I'll catch that... Uh, at Puma on the left. Puma, that was 18 minutes. Yeah, we'll see it so we can actually catch it at the moment of death. And uh, yeah, Fortune just continuously repairs the uh, the 40 millimeter gun, and uh, yeah, he's able to just simply sit there and has the MG around for suppression and cover. Looks like the hedge has been opened, so it's actually even able to shoot in that direction. So makes it a little bit more difficult for those Treks to pop by. Jessalyn, for his part, has gone straight to Tier 4. Going to be building a Puma. He didn't build Tier 3, so yeah, he skipped it all together since he... Well, he didn't really need to, because, I mean, Fortune essentially is playing very passively. But I feel that that's kind of what the... Uh, kind of what the... Uh, oh, <laughs> nasty. <laughs> yeah, nailed that, uh, that squad on the retreat. Um, I kind of feel that the Brits are probably going to be like that, not very aggressive. I mean, they do have, you know, emplacements and such. Oh, interesting. Huh. Well, it's a destroy cover charge, which is free, but it apparently is strong enough to destroy and make holes in hedges. That's kind of cool. So that's going to make the, uh, the gun here a lot stronger. That's the table to shoot through those hedges. So the Panther is going to be moving up on the left-hand side here of the uh, the 40mm gun. Taking some shots at it. 
It's going to be shot back in return. We do have the powder guns behind it. Sniper up in the top. Going to be getting some shots off on it. It manages to get a... Uh, ah, well, almost gets itself crushed, but it uh, it disables the, uh, the turret of the panther. I want to see what the uh, name of the ability is. And the Panther, at the very edge, getting some shots off on that 4mm gun. That's full force. Uh, where is it? Um, critical shot. After pinpointing the most vulnerable part of the target, the sniper puts a 13.9mm round into it, temporarily disabling the target. So I don't know if it has different uh, potential disabling crits, but the crit that it hit on the Panther was the turret one, where essentially the turret is not going to turn. So you kind of have to manually turn the tank if you want to be able to actually shoot at something. Infantry section over here on the left-hand side. Still doing some good job. Has gotten better in C2. What did they get? Rank 1, just uh, sight range while in cover. Improves squad survivability. We are losing a sector. Ooh. They get some Lee Enfield rifles when they better in 3. Pile squad unable to stand against the... Uh, the infantry section, I mean the infantry section, the Tommies are pretty strong. Right hand side, engineer squad retreating, the sniper on the field for Jesselin, still with 35 kills to its name. And we see Jesselin going for the Panzerwerfer. A more than likely very, very popular choice against the Brits, again, because of their emplacements. I remember in Vico again, well not Vico, but Company Heroes 1, you know. Stukas and the like were very good and very popular against the Sim City of the infantry. I mean, of the British, right? So yeah, the Panzer Warfare is going to move up to get some shots off on that bull force, probably. Although it's kind of exposing itself there. Oh, it went a little bit too far. Oh, 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 oh! Yee, that is a big mistake there for Jeselin. Not sure if he moved it or if that was just the. Uh, the rally point, but yeah, that needed to stop a little bit shorter than that. Oh, oof, that's bad. Fortune going for its doctrine, and that is the commando regiment. We see a glider coming in. <laughs> um, deploy a gli glider filled with commandos to the target location. So where is he gliding it? Oh, so he's going to glide it into the base. Okay. The big ass glider. That's a lot bigger than what it once was in uh, Company Years One. I'm assuming though you can still do the same thing where it allows reinforcements. Yeah. So if you can land that on the field and keep it alive, you can actually reinforce your squads. But he does got the commandos. The commandos. Did they still have those? Um... Ah, what was it? The. No, not them. Uh... Damn it. Well, whatever they are. Little uh, silenced uh, Sten guns, right? I think Sten. Uh, yeah, it looks like they do. They have those uh, silenced with the uh, side clip. <laughs> uh, so, what do you get with this doctrine? You get uh, smoke rate operation. Smoke barrages will occur on the frontline sector, and infantry units will become hidden if friendly territory is inactivated. If you will realize enemy territory more quickly, okay. Uh, infantry sections move more quickly and have better attack. Recon planes will fly over from enemy territories. Lighter. Oof. That bull force is just wrecking everything over here on the left-hand side. Taking some good damage here as the Panther and attack gun is getting some shots off on it. But it does have access to a lot of repairs. Second uh, AT gun moving up. Very forward. Sniper 35 kills. The sniper still... Only two kills so far. Still just holding its ground. Uh, AT guns have done a lot of damage here to the Panther, and the Panther moves out of the way. Oh. And the uh, Universal Carrier is still alive. It actually pushes up and gets some damage in there on the MG-42. Infantry section is forced to retreat, as we do see the uh, Ostruppen with an LMG forced to retreat. We also see the, uh, the Comet tank getting produced for Fortune. So he did go for the, uh, what was it? The Hammer? Yeah. Comet tank getting upgraded with a tank commander. 
crew self-defense. Tank crews carry a variety of close-range weapons, including fragmentation grenades and other bombs to dissuade right. nearby infantry from any notions of bravery. Okay, so you can throw grenades on the side of it. More speed and fire smoke shot. Ooh. I want to switch over to look at these guys. There we go. What does it say? Track vehicle. Yeah, okay. Well, anyways, doesn't matter. Uh, modified M6 mine right there on the field. So more mine going down. And uh, yeah, so it looks like the game comes to a uh, We're losing a capture point. bit of a stalemate, I guess. <laughs> Jessalyn going to be pushing forward here. Grenz, LMGs, and everything. We do have the Commandos right on top of the Grenz. The Grenz are, oh, getting annihilated there by the Commandos. Most Troopin' Squad also getting there. And Jessalyn throwing in the GG well played and throws the game in, or throws in the towel for the game right now. Well, I'm not sure if it was necessary at this point, but it's an interesting. Definitely can't really tell at this point how strong or not the, uh, the faction is. But yeah, again, like, similar to the original Brits, I mean, like, of course, I mean, with the exception of <laughs> the uh, the massive infantry blobbing in uh, Company Heroes 1. It seems to be a very uh, very passive style of play because of those emplacements, which are very powerful. This Bullforce actually kicked ass. Ten kills and doing a lot of damage. But I think, yeah, taking that Panzer Warfare out may have been, you know, a critical blow there to Jessalyn. But again, like I said, we're going to be seeing a lot more Brits all through the week, probably even next week. Because, again, I want to get more knowledge on the faction itself and uh, both playing it and such. So, yeah. Anyways, guys, I hope you at least enjoy the game. <laughs> if you have any positive or negative remarks, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. If you have any replays you want to send me, go ahead and send them to the email that I will put in the description. But otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.